Going to get rid of the Caitlyn to kick us off. Callista removed from Ruler. Ruler's Ash is also a very strong pick for Gen G, so wouldn't be surprised if we see TSM remove that or try and take it away themselves. Same for Double Lift, though. It was his most played during the playoffs. He's been playing a lot of Ash and Senna and is very comfortable on the champions. Lucian going to be taken off the board from TSM. Going to deny that from BDD. There's the Twisted Fate that we were talking about. Clearly not going to be the first pick for Gen G. We still have a lot of power picks open, though. Things like the Orn, like the Nidalee, still up for grabs. Exactly, ready. It's 100% pick ban on Orn and Nidalee so far in the tournament. And if you take away the Orn, the expectation is here. TSM take away the Nidalee, and then Genji will get their pick of the second tier of power picks. However, TSM still taking just a little bit of time to work out all of their options because you really don't want to give Clid a Nidalee. Instead, the Azir is going to get taken yeah. away from BDD. Of course, uh, BDD quite well known for his Azir, but surprising they would choose to take that off the board does suggest that they're willing to play into the Nidalee that you would imagine is going to be locked in for Clid. I think that he did have a solid performance on his Gragas yesterday. Let's see, what is the lock in here for Gen.G? Uh, you look at Clid's champions, Lee Sin, Volibear are up there above the Nidalee, and so perhaps you're saying, well, Clid isn't going to select Nidalee, but he, it's still his third most played across the course of summer, so it's a little surprising to see it left open here by Gen.G. Instead, they'll get the set for themselves. Of course, life on the set yesterday had an incredible performance, and he is very well known for that pick. Certainly is. Of course, they do have the flexibility with the set as well. We already saw it from uh, JDG in the last game where it was flexed across multiple roles, and we'll see what Gen G choose to do with it. For now, it is going to be the Renekton Nidalee combo. Very feared over in the LPL and has been making its way into the world's group stage. Usually, teams will try to deny some of those picks, though. They will either take away the Nidalee or they'll take away the Renekton to stop that from happening, but. TSM going to get that very deadly combo, already suggests that they're heavily going to look to play through the top side of the map, but Genji clearly prepared. They immediately lock in the Lilia. They also have the Volibear to answer into the Renekton, a matchup that we've been seeing a hell of a lot, not only throughout uh, the group stages, but also throughout the world. So a mixed damage profile, and of course, this set can still go into the mid lane, can still go into the support. You already mentioned that it is a big pick for life, but Genji still have that flexibility depending on how TSM choose to run out their draft. I love giving Core JJ his Rakan. Get that in, uh, oh, sorry, Biofrost his Rakan. I don't know why I said Core JJ. I love getting Biofrost his Rakan. Get that in early, get him something that he can get onto the back line with and have a little bit more team fight pressure. The Alistair yesterday was kind of intended to do that, but he really wasn't able to be the meatball in team fights that you were expecting. So instead of here, it's more about him dashing in and out of the fight. Yeah, I think that it is also a very big comfort pick for Biofrost, and I think that after yesterday's game, after the rough early level ones, I think the TSM's game plan here is to give him a little bit more comfort. So uh, Biofrost is going to be locking that one in. Meanwhile, TSM continuing to pinch the mid lane pool. Going to take away the Zoe as well, away from BDD. And then just looking to try and get Bjergsen the best possible matchup. Of course, he will get that counter pick later on to the game, so they can hold on for now. They're likely going to lock in their AD carry next. And Oh, the Ash actually taken off the board. I was kind of expecting uh, an Ash to come through from double lift, but it looks like that they want to deny that away from Ruler. Well, they're going to get rid of that. I wonder if that means double lift will go towards something like the Senna. It doesn't team up too well with the Rakan. Uh, not but a it's, fan. It's uh, just one of the picks that he played quite a lot over the course of playoffs. The Twitch removed, of course. We saw Team Liquid start to bring that out in the playing stage, the Twitch Rakan combo. And with the Syndra taken away, there's still Zillion available for uh, TSM if they want it. Like, Bjergsen Zillion is such a strong pick for him. I'd be surprised if they decide not to pick it up. Well, we're going to have to wait and see. I think that Zillion doesn't make a huge amount of sense in the context of the... Wow, Karma going to come through from Genji as well. So this does suggest that that is likely going to be the Ezreal Karma bot lane. But we do know that BDD does play the Karma in the mid. So there's still flexibility here for Genji, keeping their options still open. I'm wondering if it's set mid, volley into Renekton top, which yes. is what we saw Rascal play That's yesterday. what I expect. And then the Ezreal Karma yeah. bot lane is very much what I expect. I think it gives you a lot of pushing power as well. Uh, okay. I mean, it's Bjergsen Zillion. I understand it's not perfect sure. in the composition, but it's Bjergsen Zillion. Like, this guy is just so well known for this champ. He has an incredible record on it historically. I, I would have been very shocked if they didn't pick it up. Oh, I think I just need to think about this comp a little bit more, because it just... 
it seems like it's trying to do a lot of different things for TSM. Um, but we can explore it a little bit more once we actually get into the game. I think that the Gen G comp is a lot more straightforward. They have a clear front line in the form of BDD and Rascal. Very good at diving onto the back line. Both of their ultimates are literal jumps, yep. right? So they act as like, yeah, they just, they get in your face, they get very obnoxious. Meanwhile, you have the Karma to provide that additional bit of movement speed to help them close that gap. And then you have this long range damage from the Ezreal who can just be very self-sufficient while Lily is dishing out all this AP damage alongside the tanks as well. So I feel like they have a pretty straightforward front to back comp. They can play team fights extremely well. I think they scale relatively well as well. Um, and I think that they don't have to really force anything too hard in the early game. I don't expect a huge amount of aggression. I think that we should expect to see strong pushing bot side of the map from Gen G. We get to see Ruler on his Ezreal. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. And I need a little bit more time to think about this TSM comp because again, I think it kind of does a lot of different things. And clearly there's a lot of comfort here. We yeah. see like Senna for double lift, definitely one of his most played AD carries. We see the Rakan for Biofrost, definitely a comfort for him as well. And you also see the Zillion for Bjergsen. So like in terms of comfort picks, champions they're familiar with, TSM have definitely got a draft that they know how to execute on. 23 and seven in the LCS is Bjergsen's Zillion. Def will just he is synonymous with the champion. I like some of the stuff it does in this composition. Gives the Rakan more ability to engage. Protects someone, of course, uh, with that incredible ultimate. And so we'll see if TSM are able to utilize their comfort and translate it into a win. They lost yesterday against Fnatic. Gen.G just kind of sneaked by LGD. It wasn't the most impressive showing. But now, today, they will be trying to show that they are fighting for the top spot in this group. You know, thinking more about it, I actually think TSM really wanted the Twitch. And I think that Twitch ban was really huge uh, from the side of Gen G. Does that make sense? Because the if they had the Twitch, then all of a sudden this makes a lot more sense uh, in terms of the composition, especially when you have like Nidalee plus Zillion as well. Um, so I guess they kind of defaulted back to the center after it was taken off the board. Of course, this is just speculation on my part. I cannot say for sure. Um, but we have seen Twitch and Rakan uh, rising in popularity, especially from teams like Team Liquid uh, during the play-in stage. So, yeah, that's that's my biggest concern right now for TSM's composition. It feels like that you have a Zillion that, while, like, he just doesn't have damage later on into the game, right? And Nidalee, I think that her ability to teamfight later on into the game is going to get harder as well. And Renekton, his value is going to fall off. Of course, against dive champions, I think the Renekton actually has a lot of value. But when it's against a set plus a Volley Bear, that's a lot that's coming into you that I don't think Renekton is going to have as much success with. So I'm just ultimately concerned about TSM's damage yeah. later on into the game. Like, where is it going to come from? Of course, Senna can be that when you get to a certain point in the game, but... That's where my concerns come from. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they can find huge advantages up towards the top side of the map. This Nidalee Renekton combo is, of course, very terrifying. But already, level one, Genji looking for an invade. Pushing in, going to get bombed by Bjergsen. But uh, no level two, no rewind for Bjergsen. Means that the double bomb stun cannot connect. And Clip just runs straight through it. He's actually going to uh, channel his recall here. And it looks like they've just gone in to see if they can gain some vision and then decided against going for anything more. They will drop a ward on the blue buff, get some information on where Speaker is starting. I think that Genji expects Speaker to path towards top side of the map because, again, this Nidalee Renekton combo, very devastating, setting up the dives, looking for early ganks. Like, you kind of land that W from the Renekton, the spear comes through. Yeah. Like, there's so much damage and power that can come off the back of it as well. And typically, Renekton can generate so much pressure in the top lane as well. You can then move down into the top side enemy jungle and work with the Nidalee to try and invade, steal away some of those camps, and look to play as aggressive as possible. Of course, on your screen, you can see the runes coming out from Bjergsen's Zillion. Very famous, known worldwide, as you already mentioned. A very impressive win-loss record on it. And uh, going for the Glacial Augment, providing that additional utility to make it that much easier to land those double bombs to set up his team for good luck. And that is something that TSM have in space. You've got the Glacial Augment coming out from Doublelift. You've got Bjergsen with it as well. You've got the speed up from Bjergsen and from Speaker. It becomes a, a little bit more difficult for Gen G, if they are on the back foot after a fight, to disengage. However, Gen G's engage, as you've already said, Vedius, incredibly strong. And Rascal is currently wow. showing uh, Broken Blade just how strong the Volley Bear can be in the 1v1. He played this matchup yesterday and had a whale of a time versus Langshing. So I personally think that uh, Rascal is a pretty aggressive top lane player. Having watched him in the playoffs, he's someone that really likes to get in your face. And when he has a winning matchup, he will try to take advantage of it. In many ways, he actually reminds me of how Whippo approaches the game. Uh, and yesterday, we saw a lot of crazy skirmish 
finishes between Broken Blade and Whippo, both getting the edge in different situations. And I think we can expect to see the same thing from Rascal up against Broken Blade as well. He's not going to hesitate to go for that all-in, go for those trades. But so far in this laning phase, kind of things going as we expected. Rascal going to have that early push on the volley bet. Meanwhile, on the bot side of the map, Life and Ruler, when you're running with the double-ranged comp of the Karma and the Ezreal, there's going to be a lot of harassment. But here's Speaker, level three, looking for the gank. Aggression can cost you as Speaker comes up towards the top lane. A Rascal trying to trade onto Broken Blade, but Broken Blade almost wins the 1v1, has to flash away. Speaker now jumps forward and swipes away the bear. First blood TSM. This is very much what we expected, though. Uh, a full top side clear from Speaker into the level three gank going to get the Renekton ahead. Of course, it does cost Broken Blade his Flash, but the wave is in a really good spot for him. So he's going to be able to TP back in, and they can look for a return gank in the near future. Rascal does still manage to hold on to his Flash in the uh, top lane there. So Broken Blade, no summoners as he TPs back to the lane, but does have a Doran's Blade and a Pot to only the Doran's Ring from Rascal. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, we see Life and Ruler pushing in. Life, uh, sorry, Ruler actually running the Carl cut down combo, which is one we've seen a few AD carries do, because you don't get the extra health from the Doran's Blade. You can run cut down and get that little bit more damage against your lane opponent. PD posturing very far forward in the lane. Bjergsen applying the bombs, being obnoxious with his glacial augments. BDD going to be forced back underneath his tower. But while all this was happening, Clid did steal away the blue buff. We did see that on our screens, just utilizing the fact that he has pressure in the bot side of the map, along with the mid lane. Zillion really doesn't generate a lot of lane pressure in the one versus one into any matchups, and that's why we see BDD being so aggressive. And if you have a look at the CS discrepancy, there is a huge CS difference in the mid lane between BDD and Bjergsen. So BDD playing this matchup very well, knowing the limits of the champion and trying to take advantage of this Zillion in the early game. And I want to come back to that blue buff steal because something we did see yesterday in the Fnatic TSM game was Selfmade was actually really good at getting into Speaker's jungle and trying to deny some buffs from him. In fact, Fnatic in that game took 13 buffs to TSM's 8 buffs across the course of the game. So we should keep our eyes on Speaker and keep our eyes on Clay to see how many camp Speaker is losing because that translates to an XP differential as the game goes on. It's one of the things that you'll see at a lot of World Championship teams and how they utilize their pressure and Yesterday, I think TSM really struggled, not only because of the invisible pressure that Selfmade was generating, but how they would constantly move around the map and look to invade the enemy jungle, knowing that they had numbers advantage. And we're seeing it right here from Clid already in the early game. They have the push in bot, they have the push in mid. Speaker recognizes that this part of the jungle doesn't belong to him anymore, and so he has to try and steal enemy camps from the enemy top side. So. Uh, beautifully done from Clint to try and build this advantage up. And you can already see a huge CS discrepancy starting to build between the two junglers. And I just wanted to give props to Double Earth because while Top is falling behind and far, I think he's actually got a bit of a freeze up. So it's, I think it, uh, it's not too bad that he's behind, but mid is very far behind, jungle's very far behind. Even in a losing 2v2 matchup in lane, Double Earth actually coming out ahead in the CS department. Should be able to uh, pick up that tier, get towards the Mana Mune relatively soon. Rudo's gone back and got himself a tier alongside another Sapphire Crystal. So just stacking up all the mana that he can on the Ezreal early doors. Knows that he really doesn't have too much kill threat on the Senna and Rakan in the lane, so doesn't need to get that Mana Mune ASAP. You can see that from Gen G's perspective, they're looking at the tier for Ezreal. They've got the early mercs for BDD, and it's very much just a matter of taking their time. They don't have to rush into thing. If yep. they're just constantly getting these XP and, and farm advantages, then they're happy, right? Nice. And they're going to keep this thing. Uh, they're going to keep the game going in this state for as long as they can, so they can ramp up and then look to play around these neutrals like the Drake as Gen G actually sending it for a dive in the top lane. They can play the target. No flash, no TP. Loting Lullaby not available yet for Clid, still only level 5, and so Broken Blade with the Dominus should just be able to force them away. Clid looks towards the Krugs and is like, well, these aren't quite as good as a kill, but instead I could take them, as uh, Rascal is going to actually keep this wave away from the turret. Now, Speaker is on his way up, Vedius. This could be a little bit dangerous for Gen G. TSM trying to collapse. Bjergsen has the 6 and has the TP. Could get in with the chrono shift if the dive goes too wrong. But look at the minimap right now, Medi. You can see that mid is still pushing in. BDD gets to roam up first, and while Bjergsen does have the TP, there's a huge health differential. Clid gets to steal away the Krugs. He's going to steal away the red buff, and it's kind of a similar pattern to what we saw yesterday, where it's just a matter of utilizing that early game pressure to steal away camps. And remember, the meta right now is very jungle focused. Teams that 
play and funnel resources into their junglers often find the most success. That's why a lot of players like Kasa, players like Kanavi, players like uh, Canyon were all very hyped up coming into this tournament because of how teams are capable of playing through them. And we're seeing now here from Gen G how you can utilize that pressure in order to funnel even more resources. And the best way to do that is to deny the enemy jungler as many camps as possible. And like, look at that CS differential between the two junglers right now. Clid is already level six. Speaker's still level five. And even though no kills are happening in the early game, Speaker is really feeling this disadvantage. And the thing is, it's not even his fault. Yeah. There's nothing he can do about it. He just, he doesn't have that pressure in the lanes. He has a zillion in mid and a Renekton up top that's just getting bullied. He's looking down towards the bottom lane right now. Spear doesn't land as Ruler flashes away from it. Speaker trying to do what he can on the map. One of the youngest players at Worlds, nice. the last embrace connects and Ruler has been caught out here. Speaker dives forward, his second kill of the game. Life forced away, TSM finding picks where they can. All right, I love this play from Doublelift, really stepping up here in the two versus two, doing very well in the farm department and is like, I'm going for this. Flashes in, lands the route, no ruler doesn't have any escapes left, makes it even easy for Speaker to get the follow up and TSM advance their kill advantage to two and zero. Even though Speaker has fallen behind in this early game, his Nidalee is still to be feared. Four and one throughout the LCS, drew 15 bans on the champion, and he has two kills to the good this game so far. It's actually the first time since the odd one we have seen a homegrown NA player as the jungler for TSM came up through their academy league. And in his first world's appearance, well, first world's group's appearance, he's doing a pretty strong job, but he's being caught out just a little bit here. Loading Lullaby coming in, Biofrost looking for the charm. There's the Dawning Shadow as well, Showstopper. Gonna bring Speaker back, but he's got the Chrono Shift on and he's gonna come straight back to life. And now Clint is caught out of position as Broken Blade closes in the True Shot Mirage, rattles through, Bjergsen goes low, but now BDD is the secondary target. Life coming in to help out, Rascal can dive bomb in the storm, bring up a Biofrost, dancing around Broken Blade as much as you can. The face is gonna pull them back. Biofrost has to use the grand entrance to have a grand exit. The TSM were able to find one kill in the fight. Ends up being a one for one. What initially looked like a great opportunity for TSM actually only ends up evening out. And this was a situation where Jin G thought they had the prior in mid, had the prior on top, and this was a safe invade for them to do. They were not expecting Biofrost to already be here on the Rakan. So he comes in to help assist uh, Speaker. The Senna ultimate comes in as well, and then the Bjergsen ultimate too stops that execute from coming through. This forces Clint to disengage, and this is where Broken Blade sees his opportunity. Now Life does join the fray, locks up Broken Blade, and they think at this point we can keep going, but Bjergsen has no health, he has no mana. Speaker's not in a position to continue the fight either, and Broken Blade quickly realizes, oh, I'm not in a three versus four, I'm in a one versus three, and is forced to disengage. Comes well, loses his life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he disengaged all the way back to the fountain. It's the ultimate disengage. BDD is going to get his second turret plate in the mid lane. Gen G at 10 minutes with about a thousand gold lead, but some strong showing. Uh, a couple of times here from TSM. As we said, speaker 2-0-1. Biofrost as well, having a much better performance than we saw against Fnatic in the early game. He really struggled in that matchup, but here he's been able to be in the right place at the right time. As Doublelift is the target. Clear coming in as well. Doublelift uses the Curse of the Black Isles just to get underneath his turret and will just about escape. Well played there from Ruler, and he's going to get all this money from the tower plates as well. Doublelift forced to go back to base after not taking an optimal trade. And Genji going to continue to accelerate the gold lead, even though they're at a kill deficit, even though Speaker is getting these kills, like, you just got to look at the experience difference between the two. Like, Speaker level 7, Clid level 8, the number of plates that are going into the back pocket of Genji. You see the Volley Bear's been able to get one in the top lane. BDD, I think, is at 2 or even 3 in the mid lane. Ruler's got himself 3 to 4 in the bot lane. Like, Genji are just playing the map very well right now, and they're utilizing their pressure so exceptionally well. And, like, this is how you optimize Lilia. You use her strong, clear speed and pressure in the lanes to allow her to invade and steal away camps. And right now, it is working out so well for Gen G. Rascal goes back to the top lane with a 20 CS lead over Broken Blade. Broken Blade, of course, picked up a kill, but Rascal has that hodgepodge of items that we often see on the Volley Bear. The speaker comes up towards him. Rascal with the stun on Broken Blade. Uh, we'll just be able to get underneath his tower. Speaker unable to dive in there. So Speaker trying to make a play up towards the top side of the map. Really the only opportunity for him. Rascal's still sticking around, though. I feel like that this is a very dangerous thing to do, but he does know that Clid is in the, the back. 
I don't know what word I was looking for there, but he's behind him. <laughs> Clint is there. The <laughs> Peeking out the window <laughs> like, I've got you, Rascal. I'm here. I'm looking. Rascal also has the Stormbringer for that little burst of health as That's he uses true. the ultimate. So perhaps he was trying to bait TSM into a disadvantageous fight. But Speaker's actually stayed up here. And now the TP comes in from Bjergsen. Rascal's going to have to try and run. Gets down on all fours and jogs his way away. But so the problem with this is now you concede so much in the mid lane. Like that TP investment gets you absolutely nothing. And actually, I feel like Genji, yeah, here we go. I felt like they could have gone harder on this and they're going for the dive. As well, see, it doesn't quite connect. Biofrost trying to get away, has to use the flash to get away from the chains of a life. Another plate goes down and now Rascal TP's down towards the bottom lane. Double lift immediately sounds the alarms and retreats. This will be the first tower of the game in the bottom lane. And this is the cross map play from Gen G. They realize that TSM invests three members top. So what do they do? Trade TPs, invest members yep. towards the bot side because they got that mid prio. They could push people into the mid lane, then move through TSM's bot side jungle and pressure onto that bot tier one, securing themselves the first tower of the game. So Gen G right now just kind of playing the map and kind of punishing TSM for the moves that they're trying to make. In terms of CS, we have an advantage for BDD in the mid lane. He's getting himself up. He's got a giant spell to Barmy Cinder and a no magic mantle. Often we see the dead man, uh, Barmy Cinder into Dead Man's plate come out on set mid lane just for that gap closing ability of the extra movement speed. My expectation is that's where BDD will go, but with that little no magic mantle resting in his inventory as a possibility, he decides to get a little bit more magic resist to deal with Yerkes. So it's quite interesting when you look at the goal difference between Clid and Speaker, it's only about 200, 300, but when the enemy jungler is 2-0 up and you have a kill's worth of gold advantage, you can see how valuable this farm is and how much damage uh, Clid has been able to do in terms of his counter jungle presence and constantly stealing these camps away from Speaker. They're gonna look to do the same thing again here as they push in the mid lane. They're looking to gain control over the top side river so they can look to secure themselves potentially the next Rift Herald. Now Rascal has found Broken Blade. BDD is on his way down and has the Ghost could pop it if he thinks Broken Blade overextends. There's the Dominus, a slice and dice is going in and now Rascal running up the river to the help of BDD. The showstopper available here for BDD and Broken Blade. We have seen him out outplay a 2v1 before and the rest of his team is on the way to try and help out the showstopper. Brings it back underneath the tower. The Kalami, the Chrono Shift just in time. Broken Blade survives. Rascal has to flash away and that bomb is ticking on his head. Doesn't quite take him, but the Dawning Shadow from downtown. Double F gets his first of the game, and Speaker is looking for a little bit more as he lands the spear. Looking for the pounce to get dive in onto BDD, but will not go for it. Ruler, though, flashing in in the top lane, or jumping in, sorry, with the Arcane Shift, to try and catch out Double F. Biofrost now dies back onto life. Double F doesn't really want any more of this fight. Knows he doesn't have the ult, and knows that Ruler and life are just that little bit stronger right now. Oh, really clutch stuff coming out from TSM to keep Broken Blade alive. In the 1v1 with the Blade of the Ruin King already completed, Rascal greatly overestimated his ability to win it, and he needed BDD's help. And I thought that when BDD altered him back underneath the tower, that was it. But Flash comes in from Bjergsen just barely enough to get in range of the ultimate to keep him alive. And they're able to get themselves the bot tower. So they end up trading, but then with the Rift Herald on top of that, Genji extend the advantage even further. So they're now three towers to one. They still have a 2k gold lead, and while they're behind in kills, the gold is still heavily in the favor of Genji. Two and a half, uh, 2,200, 2,100 gold lead right now. We'll have another look at this Axe replay. The Stormbringer comes out, and as you say, I think Broken Blade's dead, but the Cold Meek into Flash from Bjergsen is just enough. And I love the fact that TSM uh, commits to the dive here as well. Good ultimate from Double Left to get into a position where he can land that Execute. And then Speaker's like, okay, I've got to zone him away. I don't want him defending this tower. And they're able to make that trade happen. So good stuff from TSM, able to answer back. Now the trade spawns in about 10 seconds. I don't think that TSM is strong enough to contest this right now. I think that they're likely going to just concede it, especially with Renekton on the top lane. But he does have the TP. But I think that the smarter play here is to just disengage, not go for it, and instead look to fight for the third drake when you have a couple more items under your belt. See if you can get towards that Black Cleaver for Double Lift. Looks like there's going to be two actually on the side of TSM with Broken Blade having a phage in his inventory. There's some armor stacking on the side of Gen G, so Black Cleavers can help out. And with the threat of dive from Gen G, I don't mind Double Lift saying I need that little bit extra help, health to try and survive the initial burst that comes out from the LCK representatives. I think that the uh, I think the Black Cleaver can also just offer a lot of value in terms of the stats that provides. Already, yep. already said the health, the uh, the bonus movement speed, the things that Phage give you, the cooldown reduction, extremely valuable as well. Uh, 
course, one of the big things I always look at at this point in the game is the level differential. You can see that even though Bjergsen was put very far behind, level 12, of course, is passive. It gives him a lot of valuable experience because yep. he can channel that into his teammates, help them get that level advantage, or sorry, that level up, and he also gets that XP as well. So even though he's been bullied very heavily, he is actually sitting ahead in terms of BDD, but Double F still a little bit behind. Uh, Senna. Only just hit 20 souls. I was going to say, only 20 souls at 17 I, and a I half I will minutes. clarify that, but that yeah. is very late. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I think that that was mainly just information in terms of the bonus stat. Out. We'll find out as Rascal gets caught in the bottom lane. We'll wait for production to get back to us, Vedius. Rascal trying to win this 2v1. It's going to be a 3v1 shortly as Broken Blade will join. Rascal, no flash, lands the stun on Biofrost, does have the Stormbringer. He's going to try and jump away to the safety of the tower. The speaker will not dive the bear today. So. Looks like Rascal's able to escape the weak side police, but it means that Gen.G is going to look to create pressure on towards the top side of the map. They're going to continue to steal away these jungle camps, threaten onto these towers. Double is just going to be forced to play wave clear duty for the time being. And it's just more and more being denied away from the TSM jungle. And you can see it's been sort of a steady two and a half to 3,000 gold lead for Gen.G over the little while. A couple of dips here and there, but they continue to keep it about that point. TSM have done a good job of not falling too much further behind, and I have just got clarification, Vedius. Double if now on 21 Absolution stacks. So wow. only has the first upgrade from his, uh, wow. his passive. Does give you that little bit more range, but usually if you're thinking of like super scaling center, you want to get to about 80 or so to be in a really strong position. Well, I mean, even 60 is fine, but I'm, I'm like, that is, yeah. Uh, maybe I don't play center enough, maybe I'm wrong, but that feels like quite a late 20 stacks. Does to me as well as the quickness comes in. Life here to help out Rascal, and Speaker dives in. Rascal already dead. The tanking from TSM is sublime. Biofrost able to walk out the loading lullaby. Will not be used as Ruler dies forward. Oh, oh, Speaker so low, just about able to survive. So TSM get themselves another kill. They've been doing a good job of finding a lot of picks. And uh, this time, Genji isn't able to punish TSM for anything. They're just forced to catch this bot wave. And they will be able to close that gold gap just a little bit. Now only 1.3k. TSM still looking to scale up, ramp up in towards the later game. So I've been thinking about it a little bit, Vedius. I play mostly support center, so my job is usually to harass and get true fragments, true. right? However, into an Ezreal Karma lane, well, I, mean, yes. I can see how it would be very difficult to get any stacks off. Of course, that lane. but this also then brings more questions to surround the, the purpose behind the center That's pick, true. right? Because he did also blind pick it. He had no information on what he was going up against. That's also why we uh, saw the Ash pick come through, uh, the ban rather. Um, Either way, I think Doublelift is still having a good game. You can see that CS discrepancy is starting to fall even further behind, but that's because Ruler is getting so much more farm funneled into him. Yep. Now that we're reaching later into the game, Rascal's kind of like taking a back foot. You can see that he's actually two levels behind Broken Blade right now. Um, but that's because all that gold and resources being funneled into Ruler instead and cleared as well. But we do now have a minute and a half on the next Dragon Betty. It's already two picked up for Genji. This would be sole point for Genji if they get it. It's only a mountain, so it's not the most impactful. It's not an ocean, not a cloud, but uh, so not an infernal. But it does still give you a huge amount more tankiness. And when you're playing with things like a set and a volley bear, the setup around this mountain dragon could be very impactful. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think that. Both top laners have TP. I think that what Broken Blade could do here is push in this wave and already move down towards the bot side. Uh, interestingly, we see that I think that there's enough time for Speaker to actually path up towards top side, get a little bit more information on what's going on in his jungle, but he needs to now start helping his team clear out some of these choke points. You can see that there's a control ward currently sitting on the blue buff, and this is going to be one of the obnoxious things that TSM have to get past. Because Gen.G have constant push in the mid lane, in the bot lane, uh, TSM is kind of forced to group and move through their half of the jungle as a team, as a unit. And then they need to clear this out with the sweeper the speaker does have, and then they can start moving into the enemy jungle. See, it's dangerous for Biofrost to walk by himself because the real, real, there is a real risk of him getting caught off. But this time around, he's able to disengage, and still the river is still completely dark from the perspective of TSM. Yeah, Biofrost tries to put a control ward in, but it's immediately gonna, it's gonna get swept away. Broken Blade has moved himself into like the mid lane. Does still have the TP if he needs to get to a fight with any urgency, but for the moment, Speaker is the one being forced away. BDG going in with the showstopper, TP comes in, and look at the last embrace, look at the dawning shadow, look at the damage from TSM. Life been cleared immediately, have to disengage as BDD now runs back to the rest of his team. There's a flank poten potential here for Rascal, but you're flanking all five members. All you're doing is catching yourself out. He has to run away. Gets down on all fours and runs through the river. That was a great fight for TSM as BDD overstepped. Now, what has been used? Well, 
a lot of ultimates are gone. Broken Blade ultimate's gone, BDD ultimate gone, but there's still Bjergsen ulti, and there's also still Clid's ulti. So both these teams are looking for a fight. Flash in from Broken Blade. And you can see Ruler immediately has to flash away. He knows if he is stunned up, he is caught up. But TSM are kind of being danced around from two different sides right now. They're afraid of the Rascal Collapse, but they're also getting poked out by Ruler. Meanwhile, Clid has gone back to base. He's now back in the fray. And if he lands his ultimate, here it comes. He's got the Looting Lullaby, and Double Lift is the target. They dive in on him. Broken Blade has to dance himself away, but now Double Lift is caught up in the midst of Genji, and he will get taken out. Genji get one, Rascal still chasing Biofrost away, and this will be the third dragon of the game for Genji. What looks like a great initial team fight for TSM ends up falling apart because Genji just buys so much time. You could see that TSM wanted to commit to that fight in the bot lane. They were like, let's go, four versus five, chase, chase, chase. But then they see Rascal behind them and they're like, oh, and then they have to suddenly turn around and then they're kind of being split from two different directions and they couldn't commit to a they couldn't commit to a plan, they couldn't commit to a fight, and then this ends up happening. Clear's able to rejoin the fight, he gets the ultimate off, and then Genji is ready to recommit and re-engage. It's also a major issue with the Chrono Shift, is if you're using it while the enemy team dives on top of you to protect one of your carries, if you then can't re-engage without that carry, they're just going to be stuck in the middle of all of Genji as they, as, uh, they come back to life. BDD here caught out just a little bit by Speaker, but he's got an adaptive helm and a dead man's plate, and he doesn't give a flying hoot about any of this. Bjergsen coming in with the TP as well, does have the Chrono Shift back up. BDD's gonna show stop a Biofrost back. Bjergsen almost taken out, has to use the Chrono Shift on himself. And once again, look at this, where are TSM? They can't get there in time. Bjergsen dive bombed in with the Stormbringer and BDD punches him to death. The Zillion's down, Biofrost, and next on the menu is the Mystic Shot finds its mark. Double if trying to dance around as much as he can, but it's a double for Ruler, and Genji have broken this game wide open. TSM try to force a play onto the top side of the map. BDT was the target that they went for and it did not come through. Speak is going to be executed on the hands of Clid and his ultimate and Genji will be able to lock down the Baron. And Ruler flashes the Samsung Galaxy emote. Last time these two teams met was 2016 Worlds where Samsung Galaxy and TSM went one and one in the group stage. Ruler, the only player left standing on this squad for Genji who was there then. And once again, he is taking it to G2 with fights like this. So we're seeing the second half of this fight. And uh, you'll notice that Bjergsen's ultimate gets popped extremely early. It was TSM that tried to instigate the engage, but it was such a good ultimate from BDD as well to use it onto the Rakan to actually catch him off guard. And then what looked like an engage from TSM actually ends up being an engage from Gen.G, which they can very quickly capitalize and punish. And the gold graph has gone from a meandering mountain to a skyscraper as it dances all the way up to 6,200 gold lead here for Gen.G. There's a dragon on the menu, a soul for them in two and a half minutes time. And in this Red Bull pa Baron power play, they have a lot of different options. They are looking at the moment to split BDD down towards the bottom lane. Rascal goes up top and it's kind of a traditional 1-3-1 here, Betty. Uh, yeah, I think that with the Baron buff, they can kind of just do whatever they want. I think that no one can really deal with BDD in the bot lane. Notice that he is, I think, the highest level in the game right now outside of Bjergsen. He is extremely tanky and no one's really going to be able to kill him. Bjergsen can hold him, but while he generates pressure bots, they can just play through mid and top. And like this forces also a lot of the wave clear from TSM to disappear because he's forced to sit in the bot lane. and. That then makes it easier for Genji to actually set up these sieges so they can now push in mid, move through the top side jungle, threaten the top tower, and slowly make their way closer and closer to TSM space. Bjergsen trying to clear out the wave here. BDD just punching the tower for all he's worth. Biofrost looking for an engage. Ward comes out. Ruler able to dodge just to the side of the spear. Swell Seed goes wide, but Ruler actually stepping forward here. Trinity Force and the Mura Man are already stacking up. He's got a QSS and he's on his way to a death dance next, I would assume. Chips away at the tower. Essence Flux doing a lot of work, of course, to these objectives. You can see it getting chunked out there. Rascal still in the top lane just by himself. BDD almost finished this tower. And Biofoss actually looking for a flank position here. This could be what TSM need. However, Clid, aware and awake to the danger, puts the sleep onto the Rakan. And watch out, Eep, Biofoss, as you have to dance across the wall to get yourself to safety. Meanwhile, the middle inhibitor tower goes down. Broken Blade on the menu for Ruler. He's on a killing screen now. 3-1-3 on this Ezreal. And the True Shot Barrage rattles across Biofoss. Flash ball with Mystic Shot. Doesn't quite connect, but that's an inhibitor down in the mid lane. And next up are these Nexus Towers. TSM 
retreated to their base, and Genji are just taking everything they can in a heartbeat. The Ox are trying to clear out the wave, here's the quickness from Biofrost, gets onto Ruler, but Ruler uses the QSS to get away, and Double Lift is dumped into the team. And now with the towers disabled, Ruler and Co can just sweep them away. The Nexus of the target, Speaker forced back to the fountain, and Ruler's playing with his food now. Biofrost chased away by the Ezreal, Bjergsen and Speaker back on the base, and Ruler are going to go 2-0 up in their group. Gen G with a commanding performance from start to finish. They utilized the early pressure in their lanes extremely well. And while we did see TSM finding a number of picks, a number of kills, it never really translated into anything. Gen G moved around the map extremely cleanly. They constantly stole away enemy jungle camps. And again, it's just a great example of how to utilize that pressure from your lanes. A great example of how to play around this Lilia and how devastating she actually can be. Overall, great performance from the Genji squad and definitely a uh, return to form, I would say, compared to what we saw after yesterday's game. I agree with that. I think Genji had a good showing on the day. There were some signs of life in TSM as well. I think Biofoss had a much better performance today than he yep. did yesterday. His Rakan, there were some really good moments where he found Engage's speaker as well, even though he fell behind, was still finding those picks, was still on the front foot. And that is always a good thing to see. But going 2-0 down in this group makes it a very difficult road now for TSM. They still get LGD, who really challenged Genji yesterday. And then, of course, they've still got the second round Robin against Fnatic and uh, Genji as well. Yeah, so from uh, TSM's perspective, they kind of want